Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. Call of Duty. A name I'm sure quite a few of you are very tired of. Most people in the video game community are, with the game series publisher Activision consistently not treating its customer base well, along with Call of Duty constantly gaining constant media attention from the majority of games media. And the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, we've been getting a Call of Duty video game every year for the last 14 years. 14 years and almost 20, almost 20 different Call of Duty video games. For too long, the Call of Duty series has been taking attention away from other fantastic multiplayer shooters, on top of it degrading and in some cases, ripping off from other better multiplayer shooters. And I know a great deal of people buy Call of Duty because it's the multiplayer shooter everybody's going to play. Why buy another multiplayer shooter when you're guaranteed over a year of multiplayer game time from the same game every year for the past 14 years? Everybody, enough is enough. And I think the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer on YouTube having over 2 million dislikes and it being the most disliked gaming video on YouTube is a pretty clear sign that we're tired of Call of Duty. But you need to put your money and your time where your mouth is. And I'm here to help you with that. There are other fantastic first-person shooter video games, both multiplayer, single-player, and co-op, that can satisfy and deliver where Call of Duty has been failing, as well as provide fresh, unique, and creative experiences. Now, I could give you a whole laundry list of first-person shooters, but I'm going to stick to free. Those games being Overwatch, Doom, and Rainbow Six Siege. These free games improve and perfect what Call of Duty has been faltering at for the past few years. Better graphics on an actual current generation engine. No built-in lag. An actual focus on teamwork, tactics, and being rewarded for skill. But most importantly, the games are fun. Actual, genuine, satisfying fun with depth and a soul. First up with Overwatch. Overwatch I would recommend for those of you strictly looking for the multiplayer. Overwatch's multiplayer is fast and frantic, but filled with depth, tactics, unique strategies, and multiple gameplay styles. And, for the most part, Overwatch is really well balanced. You won't find any overpowered weapons or kill streaks or quick scoping exploits in this game. On top of that, Overwatch is just much more visually diverse, with its CG animated art style, emphasis on vibrant colors, with a lot of culture and variety to the visuals. You can play the game casually and just kill other players online for fun, or casually battle against AI bots. If you're not in the mood for putting up people or don't have the best internet connection. However, if you want to play competitively, the options are absolutely there. If you want to test your limits, if you want to actually learn and be skillful and be a top player in the game, the game absolutely promotes and supports that and rewards you for that. And on a personal note when it comes to Overwatch, I find Overwatch to be a much more appropriate multiplayer game for the age demographic it's aiming for. I've never been one to agree with children under the age of 13 being allowed and enabled to play Call of Duty multiplayer at such a young age. Overwatch, in my opinion, would be a much more appropriate multiplayer game for gamers of that age demographic. However, those who are of age and like the modern military setting that Call of Duty popularized and has been known for, but have been aching to get some sort of tactical and strategic depth from the gameplay, level design, and gunplay? Well, look no further than Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege is a game that rewards you for smart play and patience. You can attempt to run and gun in this game. It's attemptable, but you'll have to get very lucky. It's not really recommended. What is recommended is effectively utilizing your equipment, special ability, weapons, and the level itself, the map itself. With Rainbow Six Siege's unique playable class characters, the Operators, all of which who have varying statistics, weapon types, and a unique special ability. Using that in conjunction with the level design, the map, the environment, which is all destructible. The destructible environments really add a new layer of depth to the game. Controlling the walls, the windows, setting up defenses and breach points. It's all very versatile and dynamic. 
On top of that, if you want a game that focuses more on teamwork, well, Rainbow Six Siege has you covered. Playing Rainbow Six Siege's PvP game modes is absolutely required that you work together with your teammates, support them, and coordinate with them, creating a much more rewarding, beneficial experience and a much more friendlier community. But maybe you're not into PvP. Maybe you're more into those PvE survival modes like COD Zombies. But you're getting a bit tired of killing zombies, so why not kill some terrorists in Rainbow Six Siege's PvE game mode, Terrorist Hunt. Play solo or with other players and friends to attack or defend a large number of terrorist AI enemies. Terrorist Hunt is not only challenging, but incredibly rewarding. Surviving waves of hostiles or clearing a building of them, whether it's solo or with squad mates, can be both a very unique and challenging time. I can't recommend Rainbow Six Siege enough. But then again, maybe some of you miss some of the more old-school gameplay multiplayer mechanics of the first-person shooters of old, but you also like some of the mechanics from present-day games. Well then there's Doom. Now Doom is not only a satisfactory enough multiplayer FPS, it also has a simply friggin' amazing, perfect single-player campaign. And on top of that, a map and game mode content editor and creator. With Doom Multiplayer, it's back to classic health and armor and ammo pickups, but retains the weapon loadout system of present-day shooters, as well as the amount of content and character customization, but retains the old-school arena map design, with some platforming, wide-open areas, high fan vantage points, flanking points, as well as having power-up and power weapon pickups on certain points of the map. It's also a unique sci-fi fantasy setting with futuristic marines, power armor, space stations, mixed with blood, gore, satanic imagery, hell, demons. Oh yeah, demons! You can also play as a demon in Doom Multiplayer. It's as fun and crazy as it sounds. And while I certainly recommend Doom's multiplayer, Doom's single-player campaign is an absolute must-play, and some of the most fun you will ever have playing a first-person shooter. It's lengthy, replayable, challenging, full of secrets and collectibles, a huge variety of enemies, a very satisfying, rewarding, and diverse progression system, fantastic level design and pacing, and again, while I absolutely absolutely recommend Doom for its multiplayer, maybe you've been missing from the Call of Duty games and their single player campaigns. Single player campaigns that actually focus on the gameplay, you know, the gunplay, what a first person shooter is supposed to be about, and Doom delivers in spades. On top of that, Doom is just fantastic value with Doom Snap Map, its game mode, map, editor, content generator, and editor, which is also cross-platform, so if anybody makes anything on Snap Map on the PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, it's shared between all platforms. Just fantastic value. And with all these awesome first-person shooters that I have talked about and mentioned and listed off, I hope one of these free will be for you and you will buy and support these games. If you are truly tired of the Call of Duty first-person shooter series taking up all of the spotlight, getting so much attention and getting so much of your money, I highly, highly recommend Call of Duty players to try those first-person shooters out. And if you know a gamer who plays nothing but Call of Duty and is maybe getting tired of Call of Duty, or you want them to broaden their video game horizons, then recommend these first-person shooters to them. I would also, on a side note, like to recommend Titanfall 2 when it comes out. The first Titanfall was spectacular, one of the best multiplayer first-person shooters ever. Some of the most action-packed, crazy fun you will ever have in a multiplayer first-person shooter. So I absolutely, of course, recommend the original Titanfall, and I would recommend paying attention to, following, and checking out Titanfall 2 when it releases later this year. Much more hype and excitement and anticipation over Titanfall 2. Now there is one other first person shooter video game that I would like to bring up that I'm sure some of you are asking right now why I didn't bring up in this video. An upcoming big blockbuster multiplayer FPS that everyone is losing their minds for and has a real good chance at competing with Call of Duty this year. And that's Battlefield 1. Well there's a reason I recommended all these other first person shooters over Battlefield 1. But that's a video for another time. This video, however, has come to a close. If you like the video in any way, shape, or form, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps everybody involved with the video if you hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on this video and all the FPS games and Call of Duty and all that jazz? Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions in the comment section below. I love reading comments. I get nearly enough comments. Please leave a comment. And if you want to help out and support this video, then please share the video on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to help me out and support me directly, then please consider pledging. I'm becoming a patron on my Patreon. Anyways guys, that's been a video, and I will see you all later.